Foreknowledge also equals what's also known as prophetic uh, pre-existence. So what do we mean by that? Well, simply that God has foreordained or predestined things according to his purpose, promise, and it's a reality long before they're for fulfilled. So that's what we've been looking at with the proleptics, prolepsis or prolept proleptic language, and also in Romans 8.29. So this is just an example showing that the language of prophetic pre-existence, if you want to call it that, um, more New Testament foreknowledge, it's not just with the Messiah figure, it's also with the followers of the Messiah. Let's, let's read with new fresh eyes, John 17, 5, the uh, infamous <laughs> text, I call it infamous because it's been defamed, I believe, quite a lot. So mm -hmm. you, you could try a reading like that where you bring in, bring in all those uh, Old Testament um, Jewish tradition elements of how the Messiah can say, you know, I was there with you. I had the glory with you and so on. And you can perhaps try that with people. And also... Uh, very key to this passage is comparing the glory that Jesus is wanting back in verse 5. He's talking about the glory he had and he wants that glory. But as we know, it goes on to read this chapter that he has been given that glory. And in turn, he, he gives it to believers, mm -hmm. not just of the, his time, but the future as well, us you know, thousands of years later. So you can also try that with, with people. So Jesus' prayer of faith, based on what the Father purposed and promised regarding his Messiah before all creation. So that's what this should be anyway. 